What's up guys? Josh Sanchez here at Omniprint International. I'm here because Brian, of course, could not be with us this week. He's very sorry not to be here, but he wishes everyone the best. I'm here to basically um, help out and give some insight. I'm really happy and excited to do this and be here and help out the team and Vic. And um, if you guys could start with me, please, by uh, turning on your cameras and joining as panelists so you guys can talk and communicate with both Edgar and I as we go over this monumental and amazing new line of revenue, which we've spoken about before, but now we're in the process of pre perfecting it. And we want to share what we've done, um, who we've worked with and we're working with, and just um, basically how to um, land like an influencer fulfillment customers where it's a big, small, and how to grow from there. So again, my name is Josh Sanchez. I, uh, I haven't been part of Army Print for a long time. I've been part of it since the beginning. Actually, I've known Vic for a long time since uh, he's been growing this. I work with him and train him as well. He's a good friend of mine. I've known him over a decade, and I highly respect him and what he's done and what he's doing, and I'm sure you guys do as well. So um, thank you guys for being here, who you guys are attending. I know this is going to be a good topic for you guys to, to understand and go over, so please ask as many questions as you can. Please be engaged. That's the only way, just like in a workout, the only way you can really get the results is if you engage into the process, what we're doing. So right now, let's start off with, before we do all that, the goods, I want to go over weekly wins, either personal or professional. So if you guys want to put your hands up or basically let us know what you got, please give us where it's fitness, business, something with your kids, family. Let's hear it. Who's got some good positive stuff for us? How about Victor? What's up, Victor? Never met you, man. Victor Rubio. Hey, how's it going? How you doing, brother? How you doing today? Pretty good. Oh, thank you, everybody. Good. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, you know, it's just another uh, another week. We're like week two into the, into our new house, and we've got the the warehouse, uh, the print shop running. Nice. I want to give you guys a tour, but I'm not 100 percent there yet because I still got some boxes that I don't like where they are. Awesome. So I'll uh, I'll fix that up. But uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, Wish me luck. I got a a, a, a two thousand piece order that I'm working on right now, Ooh. where they want me to fulfill each one individually. Let's go. Uh, so there is a pick pack uh, component to it, which is really nice. So awesome. Uh, hopefully, it's good. It's for uh, it's for a company that runs um, online uh, high school education, high, online uh, schooling across multiple states. They're a huge company. Wow. And so I am now their corporate merchandise facilitator and now they want me to do this big order so 2000 wow. shirts a couple hundred bags a couple hundred water bottles stuff like that so that's all we're, nice. we're going to have you we're going to have you on here today you're going to talk about that because you're already doing it <laughs> <laughs> we're all doing it here we're all working hard yes sir we're all just scale after that correct correct all right victor thank you so much awesome anyone else hands before i call anyone this is like it's like high school again let's see Michael, Michael, you guys look really, I see you there. Yeah, you guys look really positive and happy. Let's get you guys. What do you got to win, personal or business? Oh, we have some more customers that we have gained from other customers. So we're still working the word of mouth. Nice. Awesome. There you go. That's what it's about. Your network becomes your net worth. Very great. All right, let's do one more. Thank you guys, one more. Daniel, what's up, sir? Let's get you on there. Hey, good afternoon, Hi. everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. I got a, I don't know, I, don't, I can't remember if last time I was on, I had this order or not, but uh, our battalion has uh, ordered battalion shirts from me, so. These, this one here is for the facility, so the battalion's going to have, uh, they got an order for 500, or initially it was 1,000, and then they scaled it back to 500 for family day in September, so I've got about a month to knock out those 500, awesome. and uh, he'll probably be ordering another 500 after that, so I'm pretty stoked about that. And That's awesome. Maybe the, maybe the other line companies will jump on board afterwards and order some more, I don't know, but it's uh, that's awesome. I'm loving it. Uh, that's great. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's great. Yeah, I saw your color. My dad was uh, in the, he was a master drill sergeant for the Army Rangers. Oh, man. First. So I saw that color. I was like, this gentleman was probably serving before. So thank you for your service if you did anyone else. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Okay, so are you guys ready to get started into the goods? 
Hey, Josh, can you hear me? I hear you, Edgar. Hey, how's it going? I just wanted to jump in and introduce myself. But before I do that, Josh, uh, Richard had his hand on, you know, his hand up. So I don't know if you want to call on him. Maybe oh, he Richard. has a wind he wants to share. Richard, let's go with you. I'm sorry I didn't see that, brother. Hey, that's all right. No problem. This is my first time being here. So all right. you know, kind of nervous. Uh, and I nervous. want to apologize on my, on my screen because I had it covered with some tape and then I took it off right now. So yeah, oh, so you're fine. Now you don't really have to be nervous at all. We can't barely see you. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. You're in another dimension, <laughs> that's, Richard. Take a phone call. That's, that's good, though. <laughs> I'm glad. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. And, uh, you know, it's a new experience for me. So it'll be good. I'll be having my um, BTG printer since pretty much Army Print started. Nice. Um, it was, I want to say, uh, about eight years ago, something like that. And uh, I know, say, uh, it was, you, know, you guys, when you guys first started, you guys had a little small warehouse. Now you guys are huge. Every time I go over there, it's like, it's amazing. Are you talking about the one that was over by the airport? Yep, yep. Ha <laughs> man, you're yeah. OG. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, so yeah. So, I mean, I still, ha I, I still have my, my original uh, printer. I still awesome. have it running and everything. Yep. Wow. So, hey, they last. It. You see guys, they last. Yes. <laughs> cool, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome for your first time. You're gonna get some good stuff out of this. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yes, sir. Edgar. Yeah. So just to jump in, uh, thanks, Josh. That was a great intro uh, for some, for some of you guys that don't know Josh, you know, he's definitely been with us. You know, he's almost like family to us. He's been here, you know, from the get go. Uh, so definitely, you know, thanks for uh, filling in for Brian. You know, those are definitely some uh, big shoes to fill. And, you know, I've seen some of you guys here, Michael, you know, Victor, you know, it's been a while. I haven't seen you guys, you know, how's it going? The main thing that we're going to be going over today, you know, hopefully, you know, to show you guys some value is, you know, in regards to how to land, you know, a print on demand fulfillment customer to do fulfillment either via Shopify or, you know, any other store. I know this is pretty much, you know, Victor, you know, he just shared how he has, you know, this 2000 piece order for fulfillment. So, you know, I know Victor, he's a pro and when it comes to doing fulfillment and so forth, but the main thing is we wanted to share, you know, uh, you know, I know we were talking about big wins, but, you know, Josh has a big win because, you know, uh, he has a customer, you know, he's a, Josh is actually, you know, he, he handles all our influencers uh, for Omniprint, you know, so he deals with, you know, I think his minimum requirement is like a million followers just to talk to them, right, Josh? Or like else you won't pick up the 30 million yeah. or else he you was... won't pick up the phone, right? Yeah, that works. Gotta be three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the big win, Josh, had you know i wanted to you know just throw you under the bus here josh is that he actually you know has a new uh, influencer that you know jumped on board not too long ago you know i think he has like almost five million followers on instagram and you know we just started doing his print on demand fulfillment you know that's one of the shirts that josh is rocking right there if you know if, you know you guys can zoom into that he's a you know he's a weightlifter he's in the yeah. fitness industry and that's kind of what we wanted to kind of go over from the you know from the whole process of you know, maybe Josh, you can talk about how you went ahead. You know, you just said a, a really good quote that I like, you know, your, your network becomes your net worth and you, you know, you have, you know, some big heavy hitters. So do you want to kind of share with us, you know, your process as far as, you know, how you get around these people, or where, where did you find them? Because I know, you know, uh, I've met a lot of, you know, your network that you have, and, you know, some of them have like almost 20 million followers. I'm like, you know, where's, where's Josh finding these people? You know, like <laughs> yeah. the only followers I have are like my three dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you, Edgar. I think, uh, appreciate that. It's, uh, it's been, it's been a challenge to, you know, basically kind of to do this, but you guys got to know, just like anything, I look at everything like kind of like a workout. The more tenacity and consistent you are in your workouts and you apply yourself, the more that good stuff is going to happen, especially when you think positive thoughts. So it was funny because basically with Larry Wheels, I don't know if you guys know Larry Wheels, but he has millions and millions of followers on YouTube and Instagram. Um, he broke records at 17 deadlifting. This is actually one of his main PRs, which is the personal record, his brand. Um, it's 935 pound deadlift that he did three times. And this, this guy's only 28 years old, but he did it when he was younger. So his, his claim to fame is he's one of the strongest guys. And if you meet him in person, he literally looks like Arnold. His arms are just, it's insane. Like when I hug this guy, it's like hugging a bus. It's really, it's really interesting. But 
I said that quote earlier because your network is your net worth. The, the way that I was able to get in contact with Larry was I had an opportunity. Me and Victor talk about this all the time. Like the wave of opportunity is going to hit you. Rather, you just, or you're going to go and jump into the wave or you're just going to let it stand by and you're going to try to let it hit you. So I jumped into the wave. I saw an opportunity. Um, a good friend of mine, Jason Ellis, he basically is the number, for, number one photographer in the whole industry for fitness. You've probably seen a lot of his stuff. I was one on, on his cover, actually. Um, so I put the work in back then years ago, but he invited me to a dinner that he said Larry Wills is going to be there. This is a dinner that I knew was going to cost a lot of money because there's a lot of guys and we're going to Javier's in Newport Beach or in like Newport Coast. So I knew it was going to be a lot, but I saw, okay, let me go there make an investment. Hopefully I might be able to get some kind of FaceTime with Larry Wills and then give him my idea. You know, God gave me this idea of like working with people that have an influence because in the areas that God gave me the opportunity, for instance, like to work at infrastructures like Victor's and other areas that I work in, like in food and other stuff. But, you know, basically Victor allowed me to use his infrastructure to be like pitch Larry into doing a merchandise deal. What basically I just kind of, I pitched Larry on like, hey man, like I looked at his website before I saw him. So I basically studied him a little bit, saw that he had some merchandise, but he didn't have a fulfillment type. He didn't have new stuff that he could use our printers with, our inks and our technology. So basically I was trying to like get to that point. I got him to, I got, I was able to sit beside him and I pitched him on just the idea of some other business stuff and then basically merchandise. And then finally I was able to, I'll go through the whole process, but basically I was able to get him on board. We're now printing for him, um, but it's been a process of challenge. So we wanna go over kind of like, we won't go too much in detail, but kind of how it starts off from when you get the lead, what you wanna do from there, how you plug into Omniprint, and then basically how you ensure the back end quality and all the fulfillment stuff is working 100%. So then both parties are making money. Because essentially, when you're finding these influencers or people that have big businesses, kind of like, you know, Daniel over here, he found a good one. You have uh, Victor, you as well. You guys have, it could be football, people that have a lot of, of kids, a lot of clients, a lot of um, customers, a lot of employees. That's just, that's four places you can tap into. And if you can find the person that's connected to them and not direct, like maybe not directly, you may have to do some legwork like I did and I had to work around and like try to keep doing it. But if you're consistent and you find someone that can communicate with them and, and communicate the right opportunity of print on demand fulfillment with your printers, then basically you guys could have something great happen. So let's just one start. Thing, one thing that you just mentioned, Josh, that I like is how you took the initiative to research, you know, the person. So you kind of had some background information in regards yes. to them. Maybe you were able to see their website, kind of get an idea what their goals were and so forth. And, you know, I know I've talked to some of you guys in the past and, you know, from my experience of, you know, my background in fulfillment, uh, you know, one, one good way to kind of get your foot in the door, because a lot of you guys, you know, like myself, where you might not have access to these, you know, mil millions of millions of followers, influencers you know one good way to do it you know if you have like a you know your printer you can print out a sample uh you can drop it off to your local restaurant you know that's kind of how you get the foot in the door uh network i don't know i don't want to put you in the spot victor but w would you mind sharing how you found your customer you don't have to disclose who it is or, or or whatnot but would you mind sharing like what your process is uh yeah so um so I, I have my own clients that I, like, so I did e-commerce for a lot of different events and stuff like that. And I noticed that these e-commerce companies, these companies, these events don't have, they do have a merchandising option, which we provide for, but we didn't, uh, they wanted to do custom stuff. They wanted to do all these different things and they wanted to do items that maybe they didn't sell a lot of that they wanted to keep on the shelf that they, um, that they uh, um, uh, do want to sell and they want to produce on demand. So I created this whole side business a, 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 as an extension of that. And and so what I've done is with all of my connections and networks with uh, different printers and 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 working them and, and and volunteering in my kids' sports. I, now that they're all past that, I I'm like, well, hey, you know, do you want to do for your football team? Do you want to do merchandise for that? And it's not just for the players, but it's for the fans. So those parents work for companies and they 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 said, hey, well, I have my softball team or I have my company or I run a dental company and I want to do this and that. And uh, and then you just network that way. And it's just taking that one step further, one step further, one step further. 
this one company that uh, the, I did a 2000 order, uh, shirt order a couple months ago, and it was for a, tur a soccer tournament and they wanted to do shirts for everybody in the in the soccer tournament. So that that's just, you know, uh, uh, extending my network through other people and just providing good service and that good service, despite, you know, not being a marketing uh uh, an overt marketing approach, it still carries on because people say, hey, I want to get a shirt like that. Who'd you use? Well, these guys are really good. Yeah. And that that kind of recommendation is worth more than any kind of Google ad that you can put out there because it's it comes from someone that that you trust. So if you keep putting out quality product, you you know, you uh, sometimes I do mess up and a customer says, hey, you know, you forgot to put the numbers. I say, well, keep the two shirts that you got. Those are souvenirs. I'll send you brand new ones. And I send them to them right away. It didn't really cost me much, but the customer at the end of the day, he's overjoyed. And that customer may know somebody and they're like, oh yeah, these guys are really good. So it's it, there's a whole viral component that you can do at, at, and organically reach out to people. And it's it's all relayed by how well you do the how well you do your work and how and how they relay that to the people that they know. And that's how I've been getting these viral customers because there's always somebody who's in a bigger position and a higher position and it just keeps getting carried on. And and it's and I don't do much except provide good service to the person that I'm talking to, and it goes from there. Uh, that's not the be all end all of how to get customers, but it's definitely a way that I feel is really really effective. That's great Thanks for sharing, Victor. And uh, you know the key takeaway that I'm taking from what you just said right now is you know having that great customer service because you know that's how you're able to build. And you know I I know uh, Michael and Yvonne, you know you guys shared about you know your how you're expanding with your network and. You know, the, you know, the dots that I've been connecting with different customers that I've been talking to, it's always having that good customer service. And, you know, like how you just said, Victor, you know, sometimes you do make errors and it's how, how do you handle those errors and, you know, maybe potentially turn an up, upset customer into, a, you know, a long life uh, fan. So what I've done really fast is uh, I actually, on my main site, I added the, uh, the live customer chat from Shopify on that and it goes right to my cell phone. And, you know, I, I hopefully my errors are really low, so I don't get a lot of questions and I have automated <laughs> some auto responses. But yeah, like I'm in Home Depot and I'm like, oh, hey, you know, where's the size charge for this? I'm like, there's no problem. It's right here. And then I and then they get that answer right away. They don't know I'm at Home Depot doing my own thing, <laughs> but they got good service and they're really appreciative and they carry that on. And actually, I hear that from my clients that they say, oh, yeah, they, these people tell me that you're really good with them. I'm like, OK, well, that's really good. Then then you'll stick around, too. Mm -hmm. right. nice. so retention is part of that too you know i think another way you can market victor is if you um because i literally just saw you as like ray romano like basically talking like literally like spit an image <laughs> that's the, i get actually i was stopped at a beach in in cabo and they insisted i was ray romano i told them no and they, <laughs> they didn't agree and they had to take pictures with me so i took pictures with them what, 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 what oh do? man that's so great man it was like i was tripping out i was like who, who is this i was like ray um, all right, so let's get back into it. So let me kind of break this down. Like we, we have SOPs of how we did this, me and, me and Edgar and Victor um, and the team, but let's break it down. I kind of broke it down into, into segments of, you know, and dealing just so you guys, just so you guys understand SOP, you know, it's a big fancy word for standard operating uh, procedure. If you don't, if I'm not mistaken, Josh. Yes, correct. Standard operating procedures. Um, so basically, Dealing with the customer, you obviously, if you have the opportunity, like like Victor said or Daniel, you have someone or a, um, someone that has either influence or has a big connection that you get some merch with. What I did is basically I pitched him. The second thing I had to do, and the most important thing, is you had to get them a live sample. And then when you speak with them with that live sample, you want to have, like I said, your background uh, research done of okay, where can I add more value? So basically, I saw that his website was kind of basic. He had Shopify which plugs into our work process, which Edgar will get into later on with us of how we kind of did that and how it works. Um, but basically it, it plugged in perfectly and then um, got him a shirt, an actual shirt as a, hey man, this is, this is actually what it would look like. And when he saw it, he's like, oh my gosh. But what I did, I did something different. So Larry had this image that he didn't do. So basically I had an idea that God gave me as a, hey, let's go ahead and do like a bobblehead type, character type deal of Larry's biggest PR that I th thought is incredible. And I'm, as you guys see, I love bodybuilding. I've been doing it for 22 years. Um, it's a big part of my life. But I was like, Larry, what if we took your your image and then from your video and then we made it into a character and then we sold it on your Shopify store? And he's like, yeah, that would be great. That'd be cool. 
So basically he thought I was cool, but then I had to, from there, I had to go meet with a designer that I knew who could pull through and do the design, how I know that would come to life exactly like this. So you guys have the idea, right? You have to, from there, it's like, you wanna be able to pitch it, but you wanna have the designer on team, or you gotta have someone that's good that can basically execute the simplest design that you want, or basically your vision. If you don't have that, then you're gonna to try to pitch something and then try to find that later on, you don't wanna do that. So you wanna have the designer and how you're gonna be able to and what you're gonna to pitch to them prior to going into the pitch. Um, so basically, I got this done. We didn't charge the customer anything because I was doing this all pro bono. I've been doing a lot of pro bono stuff to basically get this. You guys will have to do that and spend and invest, but it's an investment. Um, and trust me, it will pay off if you get the right one. And you guys, some of you guys know. So. I got it done and I showed him the image and then he loved it. Got the shirt to him and then he was sold. How we did that though, how we did it here at Omniprint is before I actually even sold him, we had him come into Omniprint or your shop where you guys can have them come in if you can, if not do virtually. Um, but we had him come in and check out the facility, check out the printers, check out the quality, check out the ink. So we did a little approach that week so we have it here. Um, and then basically sat down with him and we went over basically pricing. Now you guys know if you guys are already quoting your people, you already know how to do the pricing. With these influencers, they have no idea um, kind of what pricing is besides based upon Shopify. They don't know the fulfillment pricing, the shirt, all that. They may know some, but the ink and all that stuff, you guys will have control over that and this is where you guys will make your money. Um, as long as you guys do that and give an affordable, reasonable price on the end game or the end pricing with them based upon what they're currently selling now. If you're going over someone new that's not selling on Shopify, that's gonna be a whole new setup and investment as well. So I'd probably try to find leads of people currently selling and selling merchandise or something similar that you can tap into and add value. Larry actually has Shopify, so it was an exact plug and play for our work process. If you guys find someone that has Shopify, you can plug them into our work and use that software like we are doing with Larry. Um, I've been on the chat. Uh, just to add, Josh, is you know as far as pricing goes, because I know, I know a lot of the yes. people here, you know, like me, they probably watched, you know, the price is right, you know, Michael and Ivan, you're like, what's the price? Let's guess it. And you know, for for print on demand, you know, the average print on demand, if you know, you some of you guys that have been around the the block for a while, you've heard of you know the bigger companies like Print Full, Printify, you know, all these big big players, and for the most part, you're at about you know, on average, about $15 a shirt uh, printed uh, for fulfillment. So if yeah. you're going after these existing customers, and then you can mark it up. You know, if you're doing, like for Larry, you know, we're doing the inside neck, the custom neck tag for each order branded with their size. But, you know, when you're talking to these customers and they have an existing website and they're selling stuff for 15 bucks, uh, for 20 bucks, and they, they might not be the ideal customer. Mm -hmm. unless unless they're ready to you know have those higher price you know print on demand items because i know as an example if i'm not mistaken for larry's site he might have something like you know bottom dollar sales you know ten dollars fifteen dollars and this is different merchandise but then he's also positioned these you know print on demand you know he's selling these on his website for 39 dollars, which is a good price point for him uh, especially if you know he's paying the fulfillment for us so, you know, if you have that relationship, because somebody that's, you know, that already has like, let's say for Larry, you know, he has almost like Josh said, he has like almost four or 5 million followers. He has a whole team behind his Shopify uh, that takes care of that stuff. So they're not, you know, they're familiar with other fulfillment sites. So when we approach them with our pricing, it's not like we were super high or super low, you know, they could have easily tried to strong arm us, you know, but the main thing is that, you know, Josh has that relationship uh, with that customer. And that's the main thing that, you know, helped out is a relationship. But as far as, you know, uh, pricing, you know, definitely keep about 15, 15 bucks a, a, as a target goal uh, for, for fulfillment. Right. That's, I, that's what I wanted to throw in there. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. And then obviously you guys, so you, that's where like a t-shirt, basic t-shirt like this one. Um, but again, there it's, it's going to be a good price point, I think. So another thing I was going to mention is, um, when you, when you guys talk to people, the main reason why I was able to, um, to land Larry, I don't like to say close. So it's not really selling cause it's like networking and communicating. Basically it's like, you want to find a, a problem you can solve. So when I saw his website, I saw that he had 
inventory, basic inventory, and I, I was 100% sure he's been selling it because it was marked down for a long time. Comes to find he has been selling it since 2021. So why do you think that is in, in merchandise when you have it and you've been selling it for a long time? Because if you're gonna do a new order, you gotta buy a thousand, two thousand. You're gonna have to go see Victor or Daniel to get to get a big order, like to get that to get that lower pricing. You're gonna have to buy a lot. So the MOQs is a big issue. So I was like, hey man, like I see your stuff. I was like, and I don't see anything new. Is that because you don't want to buy a big bulk and then have to store it, ship and film it? And he's like, yes, you know, I have. They have. Sorry, let me talk like he has someone that basically they ship and fulfill for him. But he does talk like that. But he did, they they ship for him. And so I'm like, man, so I was like, there's a, there's a problem like itself. So, hey, as a, how, Larry, how about this? What if you had the opportunity, this is how I pitched them, what if you had the opportunity to print shirts on demand as they came in on high on a high quality printer with high quality ink that you basically could control, take down or put on new drops every week or how you want because you do videos every single week on YouTube. So you could essentially post something new every week and we could work with you on that to basically we would ship or we would print it ship, fulfill, we would plug your Shopify into our Shopify system, and then basically we would handle all the back end so you don't have to do anything. You can continue to market yourself, you continue to sell yourself and sell your website, funnel and market people to your website, and we'll basically handle this for you. And he was like, wow, that's, that's like, that sounds great. Cause like, why won't you, why would you say no to that? So basically from there, I solved an issue and a problem, right? And then from there, it sparked his interest. From there, I got him a shirt real live so he could see it, feel it, put it on. From there, we had him come in. We did a tour. We presented pricing, right? We went over again his goals, what he's trying to do, our value and how we're adding value to his store and all the extra stuff that we could do and add in, like adding new drops, DTF. Uh, uh, we had the hats and embroidery. So Victor and Omniprint now, we have so many things you guys can use. This is an opportunity that you guys could grow and get new and get some of our equipment if you don't have it. I've seen the Cheetah in work. I've seen the i2 in work. I love that machine. Um, the Free Jet, obviously, you know, but the DTF, like we have some really cool machines. You can do some really cool stuff. And with these people too, it's like you can keep it simple or you can get more in detail like this. You got to find out what they're selling. Maybe offer something new like I did with an idea. See how they feel on it. If not, be like, okay, if you don't like that idea, well, how about this? You want to prepare yourself and see what's selling on the market. You know, if you have the opportunity to just like see who's selling and like that's compatible with them. Because what I did is I saw that as like, Larry, who's compatible with you? I think it's Bradley Martin. He has, he does a million dollars a month in merchandise on this website, which is insane. Imagine you guys land that account, which we're trying to, we're gonna, that's my next goal is to land him. And, and Larry does a lot too. But as I like, Larry, what if you had this opportunity to print on demand with the Omniprint printers and ink that you saw, and then it as it came in. You don't have to spend all this money up front. We'll charge you every week and invoice you every week based upon an L pull from the revenue that you come in from your website already. And I was like, and this is where we make the money together. We become partners. Because essentially you guys are partnering with these people or these businesses. Um, so that's kind of how I did the pitch. Um, breaking it down at the pricing, you guys want to know that and know like what's, make sure you guys are making your money. If you guys going to have additional people. So you want to also plan for if you guys are going to scale and grow it and you're going to do stuff like Victor or Daniel and you're going to have 2000 orders and you get all right at the bat, you want to be able to have the, a little buffer like me and Edgar put a little buffer on to add in that extra help so we can basically get that added in when and if we need it and on demand. Um, you guys don't want to be caught with a big order and not be able to fulfill it. Um, and then you want to work closely too with the Omniprint team if you guys are using our work system, obviously with the printers you will. And then we're just kind of here to help you guys kind of do it. You know, we're all here to win. We're all here to help each other. You know, no one's here to, to be the top dog. I mean, maybe Victor, but you know, even, even I, you know, can be up there with them too. And you guys. So, um, just, just to add to what you're, what you just said right now, Josh, uh, you know, as far as pretty much what, what I heard, you know, when you were talking, it kind of, you know, rang a bell as far as like, you know, having the price point, where you can actually pay to get the work done because, you know, one of the mistakes that I've seen people do, and I, you know, I did in the beginning when I was doing fulfillment, I think for the most part, most of you guys know me, but if you don't, I, I actually did fulfillment for about 12 years. You know, I worked with like Facebook, Coca-Cola, you know, the big guys all the way down to like an artist, you know, walking in with a big dream. And, you know, when I first started off, one of the mistakes I did is like, uh, I would have people lowball me and, and then they'd be like, Oh, I'll give you, you know, five bucks, 
And then I'm all like, okay, that doesn't sound that bad. You know, the shirt is three, the ink is, you know, a dollar, the pre trim is 50 cents, I'll make 50 cents a shirt. And then, but it's like, you're not factoring, factoring the actual, your hourly, your expenses. So that's why, you know, always, you know, if you guys have any questions, definitely ask us. But, you know, the biggest thing is pricing. You want to start off at a good price right out the gate because the last thing that you want to do uh, is get a huge order and, you know, the pricing that you gave, either you're going to break even or you're going to lose money. You definitely don't want to be in those situations where, you know, you would have made more money staying at home watching TV. And, you know, I've, I've had to learn the hard way. And that's why, you know, from what you just said, what you were talking about right now, Josh, is, you know, having that pricing uh, to be able to fulfill these orders. And, you know, another thing that I think I, I, think I heard you say, you know, uh, is that, you know, you want to have you know, backup to help you out. You know, one of the services that, you know, I know we've mentioned is that, you know, for you guys that, you know, you have larger volumes, you need help with, you know, this is a good time, you know, good network. Uh, you know, we can help you out. You can reach out to somebody like Yvonne or Victor, you know, they have, they can help you out fulfill orders as well. But it's having, you know, somebody to rely on as your plan B, your plan C, because the last thing you want to do is, you know, get a big order. And, you know, one thing that I always share is, don't take an order that you cannot afford to refund. Uh, so that's the that's the cool thing with what we're doing is print on demand is that we're not, it's not like, you know, we're pre-selling, a you know, 2,000 shirts, 5,000 shirts, it's pretty much as they're coming in. And, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, but, you know, that's kind of the biggest thing is, you know, limiting your exposure. Yeah. I mean, uh, limiting your exposure with what exactly? With losses. Oh, yeah. So, I mean... I mean, obviously you don't want to go into something and, oh man, so you want to have all your eggs in a row. The pricing is the biggest thing. So just make sure you break it down. Um, and if you need help with that, reach out to us as well. We can help you do it too. Um, okay, so I want to give you guys some more pinpoints of where you can actually find some more of these people. Again, I found them um, through mutual friends. He was a mutual friend and someone I worked with. I was on his magazine cover. I shot with him, did work with him. And he has access to many, many influencers and he shot with a lot of these people. So that's one, one um, area that I plug into. Fitness is a big for me. Um, if you have people that have photography, so people that already own photography and own their own um, images, that's a great one because basically, like my, my uh, buddy Jason, he has all these images he owns. And you can literally take them, put them on a shirt, DTG, and it'll look amazing. And a lot of these people that have art or images from, for photography are not printing on shirts because some of them don't know you can and they don't know the quality. So that's one big one. People that have artwork, current artwork um, that you can basically sell um, or photography is a big one. Another one that I reached out to and, and I try to get as well is um, she has like 12 million, 15 million followers. It's crazy. She's, on, uh, she's a big gamer or Twitch. So basically you want to find these people that have either the network or the net, uh, network of followers, or influencers that basically kind of like Larry and any like it could be fitness, it could be gaming, um, movie, like you want to try to like, you you don't want to, you want to diversify and try to tap into the areas that you can't, you know, and you're who you work with in your network. You may not be able to tap into fitness people yet, but if you find a strategy and you're persistent, I'm sure you can, you know, sending someone like a, if you can find and send it to their business address and you put a note in there of like a shirt like this, Hey, I had my designer design this shirt. I thought it'd be a great idea. Cause I saw this job, um, one of these guys from, from Oni print gave us an idea. We wanted to kind of do something similar. So I had a similar idea. Here's the actual shirt of it. We want to see what you thought of it. If you like it, here's my content information. Please reach out to us. We'd love to offer you an opportunity to partner with us do an on demand, not a high MOQ. And you can put a nice little pitch together in that letter that you send to them. So that's what I did to other influencers too. You got to get a product in the hand to see it. They got to see the quality, put their face, like literally put their face or something funny like this on something and you give it to someone of that has influence. They're going to like, they're most likely going to like it. And if they have a store even better you could sell, that's a big key is you want to find people that have a store. Um, that'd be really good. Um, who else can we say? So basically fitness, photography, gamers, Twitch, influencers, um, artists like music, movie, film. Um, we've had people that work with like people in the music industry and Hollywood. Um, so if you have someone like that, an actor, someone that's on, they need, they need to be um, active in marketing themselves already because you, the last thing you want to do is partner with someone that has a big following, but they don't market. They're not selling anything. And then you have to be the one to be the guinea pig to help them sell, set up the, the website. You don't want to be that person. You want to find people that are legitimate 
operating on a business standard and you can basically partner with them to make money and profit. Um, One thing that I wanted to add to what you just said, you know, if you if you do come across these people that don't have websites or anything like that, that does give you an opportunity to be able to help them out. And because one of the things that, you know, we do as well as, you know, what we what I always, you know, advise our customers to do as well is you can literally charge, you know, a couple of thousand dollars and be like, hey, you know, I'll help you get your your uh, merchandise website online. Let's get some products on there. Uh, you know, I can help you out because a lot of these people, they do want to have merchandise. They, they do want to do stuff online. They might not have the time. They might might not be the best on Shopify or they just want to pay somebody to do it. You know, there's a good way to get your foot in the door and be like, oh, I really like that. You know, like Josh was saying, I really like that sample you sent me. I just don't have, you know, an e-commerce platform. You know, how can you, you know, can you help me out? And then that's another way to, you know, bring in some revenue. Yeah. And you could even too, I make it more personal. People like personal, like, you know, if you go to, if you go to uh, Chipotle or you go to like, you know, whatever, in and out, you can get, you can get custom, you can get customized. So you basically want to give them like, look at their stuff, look at their, what they're selling. Be like, Hey, I noticed on your website, you didn't off, you're not offering an on-demand um, opportunity for your customers. They're like, what's that? And like, well, if you didn't, if you didn't know about that, then you could send them, they could, you could give them some information, the sample, and then even give them some pricing if you need to. Like if you're trying to sell someone, you know it, and you're confident on that price. You already know what it's going to be. You could give them that pricing or you can just get and they like get to see if you can get them to reply back. Um, I've had really good, really good success with giving them the actual merchandise. That's really kind of sold them for me. Um, and then obviously working with, I was like, you know, working with Omniprint, you know, we're working with their printers, like Victor's top of the line printers, the ink, he, he manufactures the ink in house. Um, so it's just, it's an amazing, it's an amazing process that you guys can work with. Um, I think we went over a lot of stuff. So now I want to basically have you guys ask questions. We can kind of talk doing some more stuff as Edgar as you think. Um, but I want uh, you before, to ask before we jump into the Q and A, I wanted to go ahead and, you know, share my, I believe I can share my screen that way I can kind oh, of show them. Yeah. I can show yes. them, you know, show them Larry's website, how it integrates with our platform, how we're doing, you know, the fulfillment in regards to it. Let me see if uh, Mauricio gave me that a VIP act access to share my screen let me see thank you guys for bearing with us too i know brian has it has it down and he's professional at this but they just threw me in this room with this big screen and like hey here let's do this <laughs> so this is you know uh larry's website right here you know that way you know let me zoom out a little uh larry wheels you know uh, josh's buddy that he's been talking about so he's in the fitness industry you know he has his, his existing shopify store and you know he he does you know quite a bit of money on a on a monthly basis and you know one of the things he does have is apparel and then I'll show you you know his existing stuff compared to you know what we're adding what we added on there um let me see if it if it loads on there we go so this is the existing stuff that that he has on his website like if you guys can are you able to see the price on there uh Josh yeah you can see it or do, $19.99, $15.99, $25.99, and $19. So as you can see, these are like pretty basic, you know, a white logo. You know, like Josh was saying, he had to order, you know, thousands of pieces per style. You know, he's he's had them on there, you know, since 2021. So for the most part, you know, most of the stuff that you'll see online, you know, it's like one color, you know, because for the most part, they're done via screen printing. And then you have, you know, the stuff that we just added, so it's a big jump, you know, now you have, you know, full graphics, which, you know, if I was to click on one of them, which is the one that Josh, Josh is wearing. If you guys want to buy it, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> PRLifestyle.com, sh shameless promotion, Josh. <laughs> um, so that way, you are you able to see the graphic better? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, so this is what, what Josh, you know, Josh reached out to a, a designer and, you know, this was an actual real picture of him, you know, deadlifting the weight. So it's not, mm -hmm. it's not, so it, they turned an actual picture into this, which was, you know, pretty cool. And then once somebody orders, you know, online, you know, the, the main thing that you want to do is because there's some customers that I talked to that, oh, Victor has a question. Oh yeah. I was waiting for you to finish, but um, no, no, can, go for it. You can bring in the image just a little bit closer. Are you doing this direct to garment or direct to film? DTG. Direct to garment. Okay, because that explains like the fading on the bottom by the feet and the A, right? Because I 
with direct to film, you can't really achieve that effect. At least no, and then if you're if you're doing direct to film, which a lot of our customers do, then mm -hmm. when it comes to creating the art, then you don't need you know that extra fading effect or anything like that. You can make you can make a cool graphic, you know, tailored specifically for direct to film. I would I but, would hard cut that design, but yeah, I was just curious if you guys had like a a new environment that I wasn't aware of. No, this is just direct to garment. So like let's say if, like let's say if I was doing fulfillment and all I had was a direct to film printer. And now to do this graphic, you know, I would probably get rid of, you know, this, this, you know, this effects, you know, definitely this logo would be there, you know, some of the fading effects wouldn't be there. But for the most part, you know, I would pick everything up. And that's kind of like when you're presenting a graphic to a customer, you know, you're presenting something to them that you're going to be able to uh, do when it comes to the actual production. So definitely don't, you know, that's why, you know, I actually work with, you know, getting some graphics done. And, you know, I'm not sure if, you know, Victor can relate to this, you know, there's a graphic artist company that I use uh, to help create artwork. And sometimes the stuff that they'll give back to me, I'll be like, hey, do you not understand, you know, apparel printing? There's no way, you know, that, that can be done with either screen printing, direct to So it's kind of like even whoever you're working with, they have to understand, you know, what you're doing, how you're going to do it. So then that way you don't have to spend too much time with these graphic artists. You know, for the most part, they know that, Hey, I'm doing direct to film. Don't use any like gradients, any you know, any of those effects. Keep it super simple. Uh, Victor, I still see your hand up. I'm not sure if you just forgot to oh, lower it. Or sorry, you... sorry, but I was going to mention that for direct for direct to film, even some of these little, little these thinner lines, like the words "personal" or even the text that's below the logo, where it says "personal record" or the uh -huh. or the the lines behind them, I still do those direct to film, and I'll make. Um, I will uh, I will stroke the the design element with two pixels of the color of the shirt, mm -hmm. and then when I do the uh, when I do the offset white, uh, it 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 still it gets on the whole white light uh, smaller areas and still prints really well. So I, I uh, and that's how I get around those really really small elements. Yeah, that's the good. That's a good thing to point out because I've, you know, I've definitely been, you know, I, I still have my hands in the fulfillment side as well. Besides the software, and I'm very amazed the progress that we've made in the direct to film because I know when we first started, you know, a lot of those details were hard to get, but now with the inks and the film, you know, you can get a lot of good, you know, thin lines and so forth. And then, like, let's say when an when an order comes in, uh, you know, you want to be able to, you know, process those orders, have a system. So like, let's say, you know, this is the back end of work. Uh, some of you customers have it, you know, you might be familiar with it. So when an order comes in, as an example, I, I went ahead and pulled up our, you know, I searched PR Lifestyle, which is for this, this specific customer. Let me see my camera just turned off. So then you'll see the, the name of the store. It'll let you know that, hey, this is a Shopify. Here's the customer, here's the status. It was paid, so then that way, you're able to fulfill those orders. You know, if you, as you scale up, you can literally do scan to print. Uh, you can print out the barcode. And as you're, I have to log in, let me see here. So, you know, as the orders come in, you're able to, you know, come in here, see the information for the customer, uh, where it's going, you know, the actual graphic. The cool thing with, with, when you're doing Shopify, it also have, you know, let me move my, I'm not sure you guys can see that. It'll have the, the image size, the placement and everything. Because when you link up a product with Shopify, you pretty much, you know, you import. It's super easy to do. It literally connects with that with the store. Um, because when I first got started in the printing industry, when it came to like integrating Shopify, you know, it was a lengthy process. You needed developers to get in, in, involved. So now like work connects directly with the Shopify pull the products and you literally say, hey, you know, every time uh, this T-shirt from this customer Shopify store comes in, you know, we're going to be doing the printing for that shirt. Uh, you go ahead and you specify, you upload the graphic once, uh, you specify the size of it. So you, when you connect the product, this is a step that you do once, but every time an order comes in, it's already ready, it's already ready to go. It has all the information. You can go as far as, you know, printing out the labels as far as, you know, when it comes to production. 
like I personally, when we're doing fulfillment, I like to do the bulk eight and a half by 11. And, you know, hopefully you guys will be able to see my screen when it comes to this. Are you still able to see my screen, Josh? Yes. You see the barcode? Yeah. Okay. So then that way, you know, you guys can print out the order sheet. Like if you have different bins, like, you know, when you start doing on-demand fulfillment, for the most part, you're going to be dealing with most of your orders being like one-offs. You know, and what I mean by a one-off is most customers are just going to order one shirt. So in that way, you know, you print out the order sheet, you can put it in your production bin. Uh, you know, if you're, once you scale up, you can have our scan the print where you just, you know, you just scan the barcode. It sends all the information to the printer and you just start printing. Uh, so the key thing, you know, is having everything organized because you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, do these, these types of orders. And then you start getting, you know, hundreds of orders coming in on day, a daily basis. Like, let's say even if you get uh, 10 orders and you have to manually be doing a lot of work, it's going to quickly, you know, bottleneck you. Uh, the cool thing about this, uh, when you're doing fulfillment to like, let's say a customer like Josh's Larry, uh, you in work, you specify what your fulfillment price is. Uh, so then that way, you know, when an order comes in, it starts creating the invoice for this customer. As an example, uh, one shirt comes in, the example that I gave was, you know, 15 bucks. Uh, so like, let's say we're charging $15, you know, this order comes in, it automatically knows that you're charging for fulfillment $15. Uh, once you create the shipping label, it'll, you know, populate the, the cost of the shipping. So at the end of the week, you're, you can bill them for everything that you've done. And, so it'll automatically do all that for you. So you don't have to worry about having to manually, you know, invoice the customer yourself. It'll automatically calculate everything for them. And the cool thing also via Shopify is that once you ship out an, an order from here, it'll automatically update their Shopify account that the order was fulfilled. It'll send their customer the tracking information. So, you know, it's a pretty much a full service uh, system that allows you to do that. And that's, that's kind of something that, that's the main way that we were able to, you know, uh, help sell a customer like Larry, because like I said, he has a team, he has a Shopify manager, he's an expert. So his concern was like, how does it integrate? How are you guys doing the fulfillment? Uh, so you definitely want to have all, you know, everything figured out if you're trying to land these, you know, these larger accounts. And, you know, some of you guys that are familiar with work, you know, we, we have a price you know, at a reasonable price, it's not going to break the bank, but it's going to allow you to, you know, manage your print shop. And, you know, I'm not sure if you wanted to add anything to what I shared, Josh, or if anybody has any, any questions that I'm not seeing. Um, no, I think, I think the process, I mean, I really like that, you know, the back end that we were able to show him this and like how it worked. And I think it was another solution to his problem to where we can show that we have the opportunity and we have the capability to manage, you know, his, the back end process to where he doesn't have to worry about it. Um, mm -hmm. I think if you guys present that software to someone that is a bigger client, that'd be ideal that you have a software that you can integrate into their shop and do what we did, like everything that Edgar said. Um, that's a big selling point. So utilize that if you guys are not, if you guys are trying to, um, you know, sell someone, like use everything you got here, the printers, the, the ink work. Um, yeah. And one key thing also is, you know, managing your workflow is, you know, having everything like, you know, I'm sure like, you know, Victor and Yvonne, you know, and Michael, uh, you guys already have your process, you know, as far as like when an order comes in, how it's like almost like a little conveyor belt, how you get it to the door. And it's, you know, having your operations. And uh, speaking of operations, I'm not sure if you guys have met Tom, you know, I'm going to put him on the spot. You know, I'm not sure if you're listening, Tom. I heard that you're super shy. So I wanted to, you know, spotlight you. You know, Tom, Tom, you know, he's our operations guy. He's the one that makes sure that, you know, the, the, the train doesn't, you know, derail on us. So I'm not sure if you want to say hi, Tom. He keeps his hey, office everyone. 81 degrees. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm hiding now. I had to put a background up. I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> has, the, he has the good office. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I met some of you all last uh, last time, but nice to meet you all. Um, this is my third week, so just still ramping up uh, and kind of getting my bearings. But yeah, definitely going to be helping out with uh, the operations and, and making things run smoothly here. Just so you guys know, to, to add on to Tom, 
I want to give Tom some props because Tom actually was one of my training clients who trained with me. He let me kick his butt for three days a week for over a year. We went for yeah, way over a year and um, consistent, one of the most consistent people, was always on time, even early. Um, and I actually, he's, he actually is like kind of crazy like me in a little way that he skydived by himself. So me and Tom both have jumped out of planes by ourselves and lived. Um, he did it a lot more than I have, but uh, really good guy. I'm really happy that he's on the team with Vic and everyone else. And I know you guys will, um, some of you will work really closely with him and he's gonna help us all grow and Omniprint as well. So we look forward to having you here, Tom. Thanks, Josh, appreciate it. Yes, sir. So we're cir circling to our time. So I'm not sure, uh, Josh, if you wanna you know, take us home, you know, any last thoughts, you know, anybody has any questions, you know, I'll, I'll hand the mic over to you. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions before we go? And then um, that, and then I want you guys to be sure to follow us on Instagram, social media, YouTube, all of us, Omniprint International. Um, you can find us. We can probably put anything, but anyone have any questions? Pretty good info. Yeah. If you guys have any help or have any questions, you need any help, please feel free to reach out to Edgar. Um, you guys can get my content information as well. You guys can follow me on Instagram. It's not big like Larry's, but it's the Superman Sanchez. I put some pretty good content on there. I train Vic at 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, after he does his dunk tank, I make him do that he has in the office. So uh, we like to get results. So we got some good stuff coming. If you guys um, need anything else, let us know. Thank you guys so much. We will see you all next Wednesday. Thank you guys. Let's go. Woo!